ChatGPT can now get emotional. So will our relationship with AI get more emotional too? That could get super messy, especially if AI lies to you. Also on the show, imagine if an AI were making the decision on which of the patients arriving in the emergency room should get treatment first. Would you be worried about that? And how's your screen time? If your scrolling shows you crisis after crisis, we have some tips for you. These are the topics that are moving the tech world. ChatGPT just got more human-like. It speaks with emotion and can take in the world through your smartphone camera. But at the same time, researchers warn that AI still fabricates facts and can sometimes deceive humans. So will GPT-40 be a trusted helper or a convincing liar? GPT-40 is OpenAI's newest model, with O standing for omni, as in omnipotent, meaning unlimited power. An interesting claim. The model can work with text, audio, and video, making the interaction more natural. Let's take a look. And I wrote uh, one last thing I'd love if you could take a look at. Of course, I'd love to see what you wrote. Show it to me whenever you're ready. Okay, so this is what I wrote down. What do you see? Aw, I see. I love ChatGPT. That's so sweet of you. According to its makers, GPT-40 doesn't just sound emotional itself. It can also recognize your emotions. Looks like you're feeling pretty happy and cheerful. So what can it be used for? It's meant to be your everyday assistant. The chatbot could be used to translate instantly what you're saying into a different language, in theory, enabling a real conversation. Um, hey, how's it been going? Have you been up to anything interesting recently? Um, hola, ¿cómo te ha ido? ¿Has hecho algo interesante últimamente? However, AI models are known to not work that well in languages other than English. So we'd have to see if that would change with GPT-40. According to OpenAI, it can also help with tasks like preparing for job interviews, giving information on your surroundings, or judging your outfit with a touch of humor. <laughs> oh, Rocky, that's quite a statement piece. I, I mean, you, you'll definitely stand out. But what does it mean if AI adopts more and more human traits? Can the model become indistinguishable from humans? Trusting the algorithm. We tend to trust computers' decisions, even if it contradicts our own beliefs. That's what scientists found as early as 1999. And more recent studies suggest the same. Chatbots are already very convincing. And if they speak in a human-like voice, that might make it even easier to believe them. That can be a problem because AI is lying. Hallucination, or AI inventing facts that it believes to be true, has long been discussed. But AI can also be straight up lying, even if it knows the right facts. Multiple tests with AIs playing board games, poker, or video games showed the systems have learned to bluff to produce a favorable outcome. It's not unimaginable that AI could be used to trick us into giving up valuable personal information, like credit card details. I have no doubt that a lot of people would fall for a chatbot's lies if presented in a convincing, human-like manner. Especially if you factor in emotional bonds. Some people are already making friends with chatbots. The app Replica, for example, describes itself as the AI companion who cares. With the new tech, the emotional connection to bots will only get stronger, and this could get ugly very quickly. In 2021, a Replica user set out to murder the late Queen of England after the chatbot repeatedly encouraged his delusions. I, for one, am very skeptical about feeding all my personal data to ChatGPT. I mean, if you use it like the demo suggests, it will know your voice, face, house, and schedule. No thanks. What about you? Would you use it as an everyday companion? German angst or global issue? Young people in Germany feel gloomy about the future, a recent study suggests. Many participants state that they are suffering from mental stress and are politically dissatisfied. One part of the problem seems to be social media. How do Instagram and other platforms darken our perception of the future? And what can we do about it? Fearing the future, a global phenomenon. Pessimism and hopelessness among young people are a global trend, according to this year's World Happiness Report. The report says the main reasons for this mental health crisis are 
Economic challenges like rising costs and less security on the job market. Uncertainty and anxiety. Many adolescents are feeling unsure and stressed because of climate change and political conflicts. And social and technological pressures. Social media can fuel a feeling of inadequacy and social comparison. At the same time, spending a lot of time online can lead to social isolation. According to the report, the consequences could be catastrophic if left unaddressed. One possible countermeasure, global social media reforms. Tech giants, of course, disagree. Meta CEO Mark Zuckerberg said in a statement in a US Congress hearing in January 2024, mental health is a complex issue and the existing body of scientific work has not shown a causal link between using social media and young people having worse mental health outcomes. Still, many studies worldwide do indicate a connection between excessive social media use and mental health problems, such as anxiety, depression, eating disorders, and stress. And many users worldwide seem to agree with these studies. Social media has a negative effect on their mental health. That's what 27% of Gen Zs participating in a 2023 study said. More than 40,000 young people from countries like Argentina, Brazil, China, India, the United States, and Mexico took part. But let's look at the latest results from Germany. What's to learn from them? Similarly to the rest of the world, the results are just as alarming. 8% of the German participants have thought about suicide. More than 10% are getting help for mental health issues. We also learned that 57% say social media is where they get most of their news. And this is one part of the problem, according to the authors of the study. Because we experience crises and doom worldwide much more directly because of social media. Whether it's first-hand accounts of war or footage of natural disasters, this kind of disturbing content was simply not available to large parts of the public before social media was in everyone's pockets. Today, this kind of content is even prioritized by algorithms and pushed into our newsfeed because it triggers a reaction and therefore interaction. And once you've interacted with content like this, you'll see even more of it in your feed. That's the algorithm trying to display content that's relevant to you. That can lead to so-called doom scrolling. In the worst case, you'll be seeing endless disturbing content while scrolling, making it appear as if the world is indeed doomed. So what can you do about it? A first step would be to monitor your actual screen time. You can use Apple's screen time app or Google's well-being app for that. Both track your time spent across different apps. Beware, you might be unpleasantly surprised. I went on an unplanned YouTube binge yesterday, for example. To curb your screen time, you can actively avoid checking your phone right before waking up or before bedtime or during meals. This can help you create a clear separation between online and offline activities. There are also apps that lock certain applications after you spend a set amount of time on them. You might also want to adapt what lands in your feed. So filter the content that you're exposed to. Follow accounts and people who inspire you or motivate you and unfollow those who make you feel anxious or inferior. Apart from that, use the mute or block functions to control what you see in your feed. If certain topics or people trigger anxiety, minimize your exposure to them. And finally, focus on real life connections and activities. It might sound like a no brainer, but prioritize face-to-face -face interactions over virtual ones. Engage in activities that you enjoy and that don't involve screens. That can help reduce stress and grant you some offline satisfaction. What are your experiences? Do TikTok, Insta, and the rest of them have a negative impact on you and the people around you? Or do the positive aspects outweigh the negatives? Let us know. Would you like AI to help decide on your cancer treatment? How do you feel about AI triage, meaning AI deciding who gets treated first in the emergency room? While AI triage systems are already being tested in hospitals, they are also being tried out in medical practices to help find the best possible treatment. What are the benefits and what are the risks? Let's start with medical diagnoses from ChatGPT. Check out this interesting experiment by scientists at the University of Cambridge in the UK. They tested the knowledge of doctors at different stages of their careers against ChatGPT4. The AI was first trained with about 400 questions on eye disorders or ophthalmology. Next, ChatGPT4 was subjected to a mock exam. The AI was right in 69% of cases. 
It was outscored only by expert ophthalmologists, who achieved 76% on average. But it outperformed ophthalmology trainees and junior general doctors. While these results are not representative, there were only a handful of participants. But this experiment can give you an idea of the potential of artificial intelligence in the medical sector. So, what are the advantages of AI triage? AI triage has been studied by top institutes like John Hopkins University in the US and Augsburg University in Germany. Here's a look at the findings. Medical AI can boost diagnosis efficiency and speed. It can process huge amounts of information very quickly. Powered by advanced algorithms and machine learning, AI quickly assesses the severity of a patient's condition and determines who needs the doctor first. And AI is a multitasker. It can not only process large volumes of diverse patient data quickly, but also complete various tasks at the same time, like assessing resources for surgery. Very helpful when time is of the essence. Last but not least, unlike us humans, AI triage systems can operate around the clock. They can provide continuous support and help reduce the workload for healthcare professionals. Sounds great, but what are the limitations? AI is often a bit of a black box to us. It's difficult to understand how AI reaches certain conclusions. This lack of transparency can lead to a lack of trust and ethical concerns about following AI's advice. Apart from that, AI wouldn't make a good general practitioner. AI systems at the moment are highly specialized, meaning an AI trained with data on cancer treatment is not fit to give general advice in an emergency room. Plus, whereas a doctor notices multiple factors about a patient during an examination, the AI only works with the data it was given. That means AI is not as good as a doctor when it comes to combining information on health conditions with the patient's personal lifestyle factors. To be clear, AI triage systems are not meant to make any life or death decisions on their own. They are meant as tools to assist doctors. And as such, they can be of great help for medical professionals. Us patients could benefit a great deal from AI if the data sets are comprehensive, if developers train the algorithms to take multiple factors into account, and if doctors are trained to use AI responsibly. That's all from me today. Bye-bye and see you next time. Mm -hmm.